Hey everyone, Joe Winter here. This vlog I'm actually going to do in two parts. The first part I'm going to discuss my new single Not So Nice and the video I put out for it. And then in part two I'm going to discuss the video that was made that I didn't release for it. So right off the bat I want to say thank you all so much for the amazing response I've been getting about the song and the video. You guys are really really sweet. I really appreciate all of the comments and the questions which I'm going to address in a little while. It's going to be a little bit of a long video, but I do want to answer those questions. One of the main things that I've been getting, and it makes me laugh every single time, people have been saying to me, Hey Jill, love, love, love the song. It stays in my head. It's super catchy, but you're really nice. And I really do crack up every time. So thank you. I'm glad people think I'm nice. I truly try to be nice to people and, and portray that, especially online, because things can very easily get misinterpreted. So again, thank you so much for those comments. And I want to explain a little bit about Not So Nice and sort of the tongue-in-cheek way that I did the song and what the meaning is behind it. So. Not so nice, the inherent message of the song is that I want people to be kind. And I want people to understand that being kind just makes the world a better place. Now, you may say, hey, well you're singing exactly opposite of that in the song. Maybe I'm not so nice, so nice anymore. Well, you're right. Because again, I'm very sarcastic by nature. Anybody that knows me personally will tell you I have a very dry sense of humor. And I also at least for myself personally and just from what I've noticed, I think people tend to gravitate more towards the sad or negative song, especially if they're going through something personally. It's easier to relate to somebody if you feel like they know exactly what you're feeling. You can listen to the song and go, hey, that person's been through what I'm going through. So I made the song a little bit more, again, tongue-in-cheek with the lyrics, but I did that juxtaposition of having the music more poppy and upbeat to try and get that vibe out there of making people want to tap their foot and enjoy it and sing along to it, but still get my message across. So, again, the main point I want people to remember is be nice, be kind. And the story about the song is really the underdog. It's about the underdog being tired of feeling mistreated. And that could be in any sort of relationship. It could be a romantic relationship, a friendship, a familial, a peer situation at school. Just any sort of relationship where a person feels like they're either being taken advantage of or just being mistreated in any sort of way. And they finally have the nerve to say, stop. Now again, I do not condone violence in any way, shape, or form. The song is not telling anyone to be violent, but it's saying it's okay to speak up and stand up for yourself. So that's, again, sort of the tongue-in-cheek point of maybe I'm not so nice, so nice anymore. If you push me, you're not going to get the best of me. You always get more flies with honey, as the saying goes. So I really want people to, to get that message of put kindness out into the world. It doesn't take much. I really started feeling this way. I mean, I've always tried to be a good person. You know, we all have our moments, we all have our moods. Nobody's perfect, I'm certainly not. But I have two small children, and they're both in school now. They're six and four. And every single day, I tell them to be kind and treat others how they want to be treated. And I ask them to explain what that means back to me so that it's not just lip service and they understand the meaning behind those words. If they see a kid sitting alone at school or, or somebody new comes into school, be friendly, be kind. And that's, again, the main message of the song. Don't push people to their limits. Always just try to do the right thing. So that's really what the message of the song is about. And now I want to discuss more about the location, and especially a lot of my friends in the UK and overseas have been asking me. As I mentioned, there was another video that I will discuss in part two of the vlog. And what happened was, this was the first song that I recorded with Paul. If you've seen any of my other vlogs or videos, I'm referring to Paul Steen, and he is my engineer and co-producer in Northern Ireland. I absolutely love him. He's amazing to work with. We have never so much as had a phone conversation. 
All of our collaborations are done online via Facebook Messenger and email. I record my basic tracks here, I send them to him. He just gets it and he gets me. And I'm sure that could be very daunting, especially for him at times, because imagine being in a recording studio with an engineer and producer and asking them to make a million different changes. Hey, could you maybe put a stereo effect on this? Could we double that? Could we try this? It gets tedious, but usually an engineer, if they're doing their job right, will happily do it with a smile on their face. Well, now multiply that by a thousand, and Paul's getting all of these emails from me, and he still manages to put it together, and 99.9% .9 of the time gets exactly what I want on the first shot. So this was the first song we did together, and I really don't mind putting his information out for everybody else to benefit from if you're looking for an engineer, producer, or anything in the audio field. It's steenaudio.com. Reach out to him. He's amazing to work with. So we did this song, had the other video done, didn't put it out. Again, I'll get to that in the next part of the vlog. I put it aside. I wasn't sure how I wanted to release it. So we moved on to 1978, which again, I'm sure you guys know about. If not, please check my other videos and you'll know what I'm talking about. After 1978, about a month or two ago, I came back around to this song. And I said, okay, now I feel like I want to revisit the video aspect. I'm an indie artist, and of course that means I'm on a budget. So I have kids, again, I mentioned, and I wasn't going to blow their college fund on doing a video. I had to do this really on a strict budget, and I called up my friend Mike Mendel. Mike Mendel I met in New York many years ago, and he and his family moved down to Florida long before we did. So I said, hey, do you mind grabbing your camera, a tripod, and we'll go out one day and see what we come up with? He said, yeah, whatever you want, let me know. Now, I can't stress enough how hot the Florida summers are. We are in the dead of summer. We went out, it was 100 degrees, blazing sun. And he was a trooper for coming out with me and doing it. We went out early in the morning and it was still, again, the sun beating down, really, really hot. We had two hours worth of battery life on his camera, his tripod, my backup guitar, any instrumentalist will tell you, you don't want to take out your main instrument into those elements. Again, about 100 degrees, sun, heat, and then the waterfront shots, the salt water, air, you just don't want to expose your good gear to that. So I brought a backup guitar. We went out and I said, or I asked, do you have any idea of where there are industrial spots? People have asked me, hey Jill, you live in Central Florida. Where are there railroad tracks? I had no idea. Thankfully, Mike had some knowledge. So those shots were actually taken on two separate railroad tracks. The first one where I'm singing on the tracks was in one location, and that also had the shed with the graffiti. And the second Peace Out one at the end was a different location. That location also had that gravel hill mound, whatever you want to call it. Mike said, hey, you want to get up on that hill with your guitar and, and do some shots? And I said, hey, sure, I'll do it, but you're going to have to get me back down when we're done. Great, no problem, I'll help you down. Okay, I'm old, 4 foot 11, I didn't want to break my neck. Would have been a bad thing. But we did it, we got it done. There was a police officer driving around the entire time we were doing it. I said to him, I really hope we don't get stopped because I think these are going to be some great shots, but if they stop us, we'll just move along. Thankfully, nobody bothered us. Thank you for your service to the officers of Central Florida and everywhere else. It's well protected. They didn't bother us at all. I think that they just turned a blind eye. We really weren't bothering anybody. We weren't being destructive of anyone's property. Even the song playback was coming out of my phone, so it wasn't very loud. And we were just having some fun, and I think they saw that. So again, thank you for not stopping us and letting us get the shots that we got. So we did those shots. People have asked me also, why did you make some of those angled camera choices? The sun. We were merely fighting the sun the entire time. Some of the shots we tried to get when Mike set it up and we looked back at the playback, they were just blurry because he couldn't see what we were setting up. The sun is that extreme in the Florida summer. So we had to readjust and compensate for it. So in a perfect world, maybe we would have had things centered a little more, or done things a little differently. But again, I wanted the natural elements behind us in that scenery. And that's why we did those things. We did the behind me shots, sitting down. Again, it was just all fighting the sun. People have also asked why I didn't do too many close-ups. I was hot. I had a full face of makeup on. 
Anybody that knows about makeup knows setting spray. I had that on. Black clothes, black boots, long pants. I felt after a few minutes like I was melting. So the earlier shots we did were by the shed and I was able to get some close-ups there. But after that, I said, Mike, listen, I feel like I'm sweating. It's not going to be cute. Nobody's going to want to see that. Please just do the shots a little further back so we'll have usable footage because I also knew that I had a timeline to get the song released with a video. So we really didn't have time to do reshoots. People have also asked me and commented that I wear sunglasses a lot. I have very, very light sensitive eyes. My eyes are blue. I did try to take off my sunglasses. There's one shot in the video where I'm kneeling down or squatting down on the railroad tracks and I start to pull them down. As soon as the sun started to peer in, my eyes started to tear up. And I didn't want that visual in the video. The song wasn't about me being sad, it wasn't a video to cry in. I didn't want to have tear stains and mess up my makeup any more than the sun was already doing it. So I had to leave them on. I'm not hiding anything. These are my eyes. No, I need nothing to really hide. Again, I need the glasses, unfortunately, just uh, for focus issues with screens and things of that nature. But that's the only reason. Not trying to hide anything, not trying to look cool. Just the way it is. So those were the things that we had to do to fight the heat, the sun, also by the waterfront, it was blazing hot, but it was windy. So now it's hot, it's windy, the wind is not cooperating, I have wind in my hair, it's hair in my face. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. We did the best we could with the shots that we were able to get, and I really hope that we were able to portray a fun, empowering video. My main takeaway, like I said, I hope everybody understands. I just want people to put good back into the world. Just be kind when you can. Say something nice to people. Don't be a keyboard warrior. There's no need to be nasty. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. And that's how I try to live my life. Again, nobody's perfect, but we all try to do the best that we can. And that's the inherent message of the song. Be nice. Be kind. Put good back into the world. So thank you all so much for watching. Part two of this vlog, I'm going to talk about an artist in the UK named Nicola Dunlop who worked on the video that I didn't release and we'll get more into that and I'll probably show a few clips from that as well. And please tune back very soon, I'm going to do that. And again, thank you so much for subscribing, for streaming on Spotify, Apple Music, Deezer, I'm on all the major streaming platforms. Please follow me on Spotify. YouTube, all my social media links are at Jill Winter Music. Thank you all so much for the support. There's still more music to come. I'm having so much fun. I'm loving it. You guys are loving it. There's no reason to stop. Thank you again. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.